My name is Marcos Yamaso Torregrosa. I'm a third degree black belt at uh, Yamaso Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, we run academies in Reno, Stockton, Boise, Idaho, uh, Winnemucca, Carson, and right here in HQ, Sacramento, California. Um, I uh, am currently first the first ranking for Fight to Win Pro, and I'll be taking on the number two ranking in our combat this uh, June 22nd uh, for the lightweight title. So surgery was uh, was crazy. I'd never undergone anything um, quite like it before. Uh, I've had obviously obstacles in the course of 20 years of Jiu-Jitsu. Everybody has obstacles, but this was uh, a considerable one. And, um, Quite frankly, I was under the impression that I might not make a return uh, to competitive jiu-jitsu, and I was okay with that. You know, like uh, I was kind of at a point in my life where, you know, I have a new baby, and you know, uh, you know, if I if I was able to get back to the mats and just be able to experience drilling and rolling, I was I was I had made a conscious decision that that's kind of what it was. But uh, I think intrinsically and, and and in nature, I'm very much a competitor, and um, you know, nobody starts jiu-jitsu because because they're, they're willing to concede. And um, I'm the same way. So what ended up happening is I had uh, meniscal surgery. I had uh, my meniscus sewn. I had my LCL in place. And I had a PCL uh, Baker cyst um, aspirated. And they were causing a mechanical issue where like the knee would not open or close. So it was like a really, really uh, very, very painful experience to have it locked. And then for a while, I couldn't even, I, I, I didn't understand how to open it back up. So it was like really, really uncomfortable and very difficult to train with. So uh, sure enough, you know, I, I squeezed the doctor's neck enough. And then on October 17th, my birthday, he, uh, he was able to operate. And uh, thankfully, we're back on the other side of, of, of surgery and, and we're back at it. Post-op was kind of crazy for me because... Uh, Again, I'm a habitual line stepper, so I like to try to find out where my physical limits are, right? And uh, I mean, the emotional limits, I, I very, very rarely have come to see those thresholds. And physically, you know, I, I think that that would, that would mirror my, my physical development as well. And uh, in the case of my knee, right, like uh, I, I was doing a lot of things a lot quicker than PT had projected. And, um, and that was just a testament to my dedication to you know, finding a way, you know, and pushing past, and uh, and um, I, I think that uh, the moment I got off crutches, probably within a month, I was drilling, and uh, I was rolling. You know, I had told myself initially, March first was going to be my roll date. I was going to be able to start in March, but I was actually rolling very light uh, in January, which is really good for me. And uh, I remember my PT uh, doc telling me that I wasn't going to be able to compete probably until August or September. And um, I felt like I was ready for competition as soon as April. So, um, you know, like it was a process and it was very difficult. A lot of people don't see uh, what happens in the dark to be able to shine in the light. And uh, man, I worked my ass off. I, I, I was doing PT literally every morning, uh, lifting, you know, three, four times a week, uh, running and doing, and, and doing bike work and a ton of Isometric, isometric drills, right? Like I was doing a ton of stuff for my needs. Even to this day, I still do a lot of those things. And uh, to be able to get where I'm at right now, you know, and, and it was a, it's a huge, it was, it was a huge hurdle for me. Uh, I think probably one of the biggest obstacles of my life. Um, I like, I, like I had mentioned before in the interview, I don't think that I ever stopped competing, right? Like I think I compete every day, and uh, it's not competing for the IBJJF or the Fight to Win Pro or, or competing for. You know, Kasai, whoever. It is competing against myself, right? It's uh, not being complacent and not allowing for myself to just sit by the wayside and, 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 and you know, pop a belly and hang out and delegate from afar. You know, I I, uh, I like to push myself and I like to grow. And, and I think that it was now, you know, or tomorrow, or it was going to happen inevitably. I was going to get back out there and I was going to compete again. And, uh, you know, I love the fight to improve specifically. I think that. Uh, Seth runs a phenomenal show, and um, you know Shoemaker's a contender, man, and, and uh, he's coming in there, and he's he's got some good steam ahead of him, and I wanted to fight the best, you know, and Seth is making that happen, and and luckily we're able to do it here in California, and uh, I'm gonna do my best to be able to be able to bring that that belt back to Sacramento for the very first time. Uh, fight to win, uh, I, I I've done a number of different shows for them. 
thus far I'm six and one. Um, actually, a, a lot of people don't don't know this, but for me, uh, going back and fighting for the fight to win pro belt now in Richmond is is going to be one year to the date that I lost uh, to Travis Maglet here in Sacramento. So um, that was a, a, a bit of a, a polemic match. You know, to this day, I, I, I feel that I did what was necessary in that match. However, the judges saw it differently. So, um, you know, I, I just have to chalk it up, you know, go back to it, get, get back to work and, and, and push forward, you know. And uh, I remember last year after having lost that match, I went right to American Nationals. I took triple gold there. And, uh, and you know, I just pushed past, you know, where a lot of people can find uh, reasons like this to be a crutch and just sit back on their ass and not do anything. It was motivated for me to, to push past and, and, and do something more with myself. So, um, Fight to Win Pro holds a special place in that, you know, they have come to Sacramento a number of different times and we've had uh, our, our card absolutely stacked with the Amaso guys, which is a really cool feeling because I think that, you know, um, independent of me, independent of me as, 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 as an individual and as a competitor, Right? Our team does very well in that atmosphere as well. So um, it's really cool to be able to cut, you know, to, to be able to return to competition. Like, this is going to be my very first competition since surgery. Return to competition, have it be in California, and have it be for a title fight. And, uh, and an historic event, nonetheless, in that we would be bringing uh, back the team in Maso for the very first time uh, to California, to Sacramento. I'm sorry, a, uh, a team tie, which is, which is a very big thing for me personally. You know, it's, I'm overcoming a lot of emotional hurdles and a lot of physical hurdles, and uh, the team is behind me, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I, I've never felt stronger, quite frankly. And this is going to be a really good test of, of where I lie in the competitive world. So there's, uh, you know, there's very rarely a distinction for me between teaching and training. Because, uh, like, there are times where I have to focus, uh, you know, I have to break off a group of the competitors and I have to, to work on some stuff. Uh, but that's mainly because of, like, a logistical uh, issue that I have regarding babysitting. Because for the most part, I've always taught all the classes and, you know, I've always uh, been here teaching and that's what I love to do. I love to teach. So, um, very rarely do I have, do I create this, this separation between the two. Um, but uh, as, of, as of late, I've had, I've had a good group of guys come in here in the afternoon and our, and our team has grown exponentially. So we have like a, a really big group of, of initiates and I can count with the support of, of our black belts. You know, Troy has been a huge help. Sean Cox has been a huge uh, help in that too as well and that they continually ha uh, help to develop these individuals. And that gives me a platform to be able to work the more complicated stuff with our, our intermediate and advanced uh, practitioners. So, man, the guys here work hard, top to bottom, everybody here works hard, so it makes, uh, it makes competing a little bit easier knowing that I'm getting good and hard work all the time. So the baby, you know, being, a, being an instructor and, and, and training uh, and being a father is, is a very interesting balance. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, I'm, I'm very much a man of many hats. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that, you know, I have a, uh, I have, I have a, trem a tremendous affinity for being a father, so it makes that part extremely easy, right? I have zero problem, you know, cleaning up after her and, and, and cooking for her, and, and uh, you know, I love every last bit of it. I love being a father. If I could have 10 kids, I would. Uh, the problems are the significant others, right? I mean, uh, I just went recently through a divorce, and so that was, that was extremely uh, painful and emotional capacity, and it made actually coming back from surgery that much more difficult, so... Um, it was, you know, now I'm, I'm pretty much a, a single dad and, and when she's with me, I'm really taking care of her almost all the time. So, um, my things like going to the gym and going to lift have, have been a little bit more difficult. You know, you have to allocate a little bit more money to, to childcare and um, maybe I wouldn't be able to stay to, through class uh, to the late hours as I would be able to one day. Uh, now I have to zip home and I have to pick her up at an acceptable hour so that she can get to bed, you know? So it's really, it's really difficult. It's a very challenging task. Um, but for me, there's nothing more rewarding. Um, you know, I, I, I find, I find uh, that the pleasure that, that I derive from being with my, my children is unequal in this world. I, I, mean, I could travel and I could eat the best of foods and I could do, you know, the most amazing things in this world. But to be able to engage with my kids is, is hands down 
what fills me the most. So it makes that part that part of being a father extremely easy. So in order for me to get to a position where my mindset, the fortitude of my mindset was that of a, of a competitor, I had to transcend a lot of emotional, you know, emotionally debilitating uh, issues that I went through recently. Divorce being among them, also the surgery. And um, I think that at least for, uh, at least for the knee, as far as the knee is concerned and preparing the body, I've always done a very good job of prep, physical prep. So I think that um, that starts there. If you want to have some sort of mental fortitude, you have to make sure that you're doing the work on the other end because these two things support each other, right? Healthy body, healthy mind and vice versa. So, um, I mean, doing all the work and, 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 and knowing that I can't, uh, you know, I can't subestimate what I've been able to achieve because I know that physically I'm, I'm of that level and I'm able to do it and I'm rolling with a bunch of really good guys and, you know, and that, 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 helps, uh, that helps solidify this idea that I'm creating a positive image of myself, right? Because uh, a lot of us get down on each other, you know, on, each, on, on, on ourselves, I'm sorry, myself included. And especially when you go through some really crummy times in life, uh, it's very hard to climb back up that hill, you know? Many times we do a lot of subconscious damage to kick ourselves and keep us down. So I, I had to work, you know, the physical part of it first, and then I started working my affirmations and visualization, right? Like I, I, I do a lot of this type of stuff, and I had to literally pick myself up some, from, from some ashes. It was very difficult for me to do. And, uh, you know, that started, quite frankly, that started in December, the moment I got off crutches. Visualization and affirmation started then. and. Um, and then I just kept pushing past and I kept pushing past and now I'm to a place where I feel like very good. I feel phenomenal, you know, physically I feel spectacular. I feel better than I had, you know, uh, quite frankly, even before surgery. I feel my passing is almost better than, than it was before. And um, as a result of the PT and all that stuff. And so that helps the mental aspect of this. And once you start believing in yourself for a change, it's incredible what you can do, you know. Uh, you can already have a physical capacity and then once you start believing in yourself in, you know, in, a, in a mental capacity, it's amazing how you can transcend the physical limitations. It's incredible. Uh, Marcus Torrigos, the first thing I think of when, when you ask me who I am, I think of myself as uh, uh, a father. The first thing that comes to my, to my, to my mind is a father and that, that extends to teaching as well. Not that I, I create like this, uh, paternal archetype for people, but I very much like to guide and lead. And, uh, you know, I, I think that that, that, is, that is basically who I am, you know, a guide, a person who guides and leads, and I lead by example, you know, I get down in the trenches, and I bleed with, with those around me, you know, just like I do with my kids. I'll get down in the trenches, and I'll do all the nasty homework with them, I'll do all the bad stuff. So, uh, a leader. Brand, I mean, as we, we grew exponentially over the last couple of years, and it started with, uh, quite frankly, the Fight Twin Pro. We, it started with uh, Jerry, uh, Jerry Haller out in Reno. We, we, uh, we fought each other in the Fight Twin Pro in Reno, and then we became really good friends. And then, um, you know, we started, we started uh, branding and, and expanding at that time, and now we, we, we count with the support of academies, not just in Reno, but also in Sparks and Winnemucca and Carson. Boise, Idaho, we have Stockton, so we're, we're very much uh, expanding over here in the Northern California, Northern uh, Nevada region, and uh, man, it's phenomenal. It's just, you know, it's, it's difficult because I'm juggling a lot of hats. Like I said, I, you know, I have the baby, you know, I have a, you know, a lot of the time now, and I'm competing, and I'm obviously running HQ here still too, and so I'm trying to make out to see everybody as much as possible, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a crazy time, you know? Like, I, I, I didn't think that we would be here, um, so quickly, you know, I thought that maybe in the future, maybe we would expand a little bit. I, I, I didn't, I wasn't able to conceptualize to what capacity, but as it started happening, it was absolutely incredible. Like it was really fast, very, very, very big, how it caught on, like, like a wildfire through, uh, through uh, dry grass. And uh, man, I'm very happy that, that I'm able to, to influence people the way that, that I have been able to over the last couple of years. Uh, you know, like when I started jujitsu, I didn't think that teaching and opening up my own academy was what I wanted to do. Quite frankly, I didn't even see that on the spectrum. Uh, I just wanted to do it because I know it felt good. It felt right. And um, jujitsu is very much like a love passion. It's like a love and a passion, a project for me, right? Like I just can't ever, I can't ever get over, right? Like, uh, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, 
I'm internally obsessed with it. So, um, you know, like, it, 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 it's incredible to be where we're at right now, you know. Uh, I kind of stumbled across uh, business, at least initially, I, I stumbled across it. I said, you know, like, if this is, if this is what it is, then let's go. And, uh, I, you know, I, I, I didn't really fight too hard for it at the beginning, but then I had to really catch up and realize what business ownership was and, how, and what it was to run a business and run the admin and run the, uh, the, the curricular portion of it. And, and uh, thank God I love jiu-jitsu because if I didn't love jiu-jitsu, I think I'd be in a different boat, right? I mean, I think you really have to love jiu-jitsu to be able to run academy. It's very difficult to handle the admin side of it, which is, you know, arguably the nasty side of it, something that I'm not very fond of personally. And, um, and uh, thankfully, I have a huge passion for jiu-jitsu to be able to offset a little bit of that negativity, you know. Uh, negativity, at least in my, my eyes, right? Like, it's very difficult because I make a living off of jiu-jitsu. So it's important for me to be, you know, to have my eyes on the prize and to know exactly what's going on there and have my hands in the dough, per se. Um, but at the same time, like, uh, this is what I like to do. The mats, that's what I like to do. I like to train and to teach and to engage with people. That's my favorite part of this. So. Um, a lot of people have asked me over the years, why don't you find somebody that can help you with the admin stuff? And uh, it's probably because I'm, I'm a little quirky and I, I, I like to make sure that, uh, you know, things that, are, things that are getting done in the admin side are being done correctly and they're, done, they're being done punctually. And, and uh, I, I feel that, you know, uh, no, nobody would do it like I would do it. So uh, it makes it very difficult to delegate any of those responsibilities. So it's very much, you know, a, a full package, like I said, it's a, you know, I have, I'm running many hats, and uh, man, I, I, I'm very happy with where we're at, you know, today. You know, we have a lot of stuff in the works. By the end of this year, we'll have showers in the facility, and we'll be knocking down a wall and just expanding uh, all of our mat space, which is going to be a huge bump for the gym, uh, at least aesthetically, uh, as far as aesthetics are concerned. And so we just keep on growing, you know, and, and, and that's a testament to like this, this never ending machine that's in my head that is, okay, so what's the next project? How can we make this better? What, what's, what's the next thing, you know? And sometimes I overwhelm myself with ideas that uh, some of them are just, you know, not attainable right now, whether it be physically and that they're too much on me or financially and too much on the gym. Or, but I'm constantly churning new ideas and trying to find a new way of, of, of growing and, and, and growing the brand. And, and growing myself as an individual and practitioner and as, as a coach. So it's just a never ending process and I love that. There's something so attractive about having a project that just never, never finishes. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I've been in Jiu Jitsu 20 years now and uh, support is difficult to come by and I want to make sure that I thank all my sponsors. Um, it started with Sam at NHB Gear uh, on the East Coast. Sam, I'm very thankful that you were always with me from the very beginning since I was, you know, Purple Belt, you were, you were behind me and you, know, you taught me business and, and uh, I very much consider you a mentor. Thank you very much for your time. To uh, Bear and AJ over there at Show Your Room, I, you know, I've never uh, felt, uh, so there was always a distinction between what sponsorship was and what family and friends were. And with that, with Show Your Room, that doesn't exist. So uh, I very much share my family and, and my intimate space with a lot of the guys and they have shared it with me too as well. I've stayed at a bunch of the guys' houses and stuff. So. Uh, I have a huge love um, at, at, a, at a personal level for the guys at Shorey World. They've always been super down to earth, super accessible, and uh, I'm very thankful for not only their support, but their, their camaraderie and their friendship. Thank you guys as well. Uh, War Tape, you guys, I mean, you're keeping my hands, you're keeping my hands healthy, man. I mean, what, you know, uh, Jiu Jitsu is all about grips and, and using our hands on the daily, and uh, I'm sure my hands would be much worse off than where they are today were it not for. Uh, your contribution as well. And lastly, uh, Defense Soap, thank you guys for keeping me clean so that we can stay on the mats doing what I'm doing. Guys, Sacco, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm very thankful for you guys' support over the, over the course of these last you know, uh, 10, 15 years, man. And, and hopefully we can just keep this ride going. Um, hopefully I can count on you guys' support for the Fight Twin Pro. June 22nd, again, uh, Seth Daniels and, and Missy and all the guys at the Fight Twin Pro, thank you guys very much for continually bringing the best and most professional show to Sacramento and to the surrounding, you know, to all the, to the nation, quite frankly. You guys are working your butts off. I see it, the world sees it, and we're very thankful for it and that it's brought Jiu-Jitsu to a whole new level, you know, a whole new level of professionalism where athletes can get paid. You know, we weren't getting paid before, at least in Jiu-Jitsu, and now we're getting paid, and that's uh, opened up the, the framework and provided a platform for, you know, guys to actually make a living off of Jiu-Jitsu. 
which is something that, you know, like if you did not have an academy and you were strictly a competitor, you weren't able to achieve. So these are, these are you know, I'm eternally grateful for these type of opportunities at this time in my life. You know, I turned uh, 39 now in October, I'm 38 currently. So, you know, uh, I'm going to give it as, as, as much as I got for as long as I have, you know, because that's, that's kind of who I am and, and what I'm about. So um, I thank you guys all for your support, you know, and for Team Imasa, you guys have always been uh, behind me, you know, like, um, it's, it's not easy, it's not easy being, being, being uh, uh, here in, 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 the, in the room, you know, like, I, I'm, I'm very hard on the guys because I expect, you know, the most from everybody, I expect 110% and that comes from myself in every practice, you know, and, and people like that, they resonate, you know, with that type of mentality. And uh, I think that we're doing something absolutely amazing, something that hasn't been seen in uh, Sacramento or, quite frankly, most of the gyms in the U.S. And I've, I travel a lot, I go to a lot of different gyms, and I don't see that type of environment, you know. And I'm very thankful to be able to to be a part of it. You know? I'm not, you know, I'm, uh, you sure I'm a leader in that? I, I show by example, but I'm very much an element within this community, and I'm very happy to see the the, the community taking you know the reins on various things themselves, you know, and social projects, and it's a really cool. Cool see, uh, feeling to see something that um, maybe you helped give birth take on a life of its own. It's absolutely beautiful. And uh, thank you guys. You know, stay in touch. You know, if you guys want to hit me up on social media, please hit me up. Yamasu JJ on Instagram. You guys can hit me up on Marcos Torrios at uh, Facebook. I engage with everybody. You know, if you guys are interested in hit me up for a seminar, I'd love to pay you guys a visit. Um, uh, hit me up on any of the social media uh, outlets. We can make a seminar happen. I'm, I'm currently booking for the second part of this year, and I'd love to come out and check you guys' academy out and show you guys a little bit of what Jiu-Jitsu is about. Thank you guys for tuning in.